Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. So the topic which we are going to consider today is the diencephalon. So as you are all aware of diencephalon it is the part of brain. We have considered the parts of brain. So there are four main parts of brain. So we have considered the brain stem, the cerebellum in the earlier lectures. So today we shall consider the diencephalon. Okay. So diencephalon basically comprises of three parts that is the thalamus, hypothalamus and the epithalamus. So that is the location of the diencephalon. Okay. So it forms the central core of the brain. Okay. So just superior to the midbrain that is the midbrain right. So just superior to it lies the diencephalon and it is almost completely encircled by the cerebral hemispheres. Okay. So cerebral hemisphere which is a part of cerebrum. And this particular part of brain, it comprises of a number of nuclei. Can you recall what is a nuclei? What is the nucleus within the CNS? It's present in the CNS, right? So that's the group of cell bodies which are present in the CNS. So that is referred to as nucleus. A group of cell bodies in the periphery it is referred to as a ganglion. So a number of nuclei are present within this diencephalon. So they, they are involved in a variety of sensory as well as motor functions. Okay. So these sensory as well as motor processing in between the higher and the lower centers of the brain. Okay. So that is the main function of the diencephalon. So to you can say that it acts as a relay station in between these between the higher and the lower centers of the brain or from the periphery also sometimes the inputs are being received by this diencephalon which can be processed and appropriate output can be given. Okay. So this particular part it extends from the brain stem to the cerebrum and it surrounds the, the third ventricle. Remember what the third ventricle is? There are cavities within the brain, right? So there are lateral ventricles, there is a third ventricle and there is a fourth ventricle, right? So it surrounds the third ventricle which is one of the cavities of the brain wherein the cerebrospinal fluid is formed and it flows through, okay? So coming to the parts of the diencephalon as I have already told you all it comprises of three main parts the thalamus, the second part is the hypothalamus and the third one is the epithalamus. So these are the three parts of the diencephalon. Apart from this projecting from the hypothalamus is the pituitary gland or the hypophysis. Pituitary gland which is an endocrine gland. So it projects from the hypothalamus. We will see the location of the pituitary gland also. Okay. Apart from that certain portions of diencephalon which are present in the walls of the third ventricle. These are called as the circumventricular organs. 
which forms the part of the wall of the third ventricle. So also the optic tract which carries the inputs from the retina of the eye. So these also enter the diencephalon. So accordingly some of the portions of this uh, diencephalon are named. Okay, we will come to that a little later. So to begin with the first part of the diencephalon that is the thalamus. Okay, now thalamus, the exact meaning of this term is inner chamber because it is located interiorly. That's why it is known as thalamus and it measures around about 3 centimeters in length. And if you consider the entire diencephalon, it is made up of 80 percent of the diencephalon. So most of the diencephalon, it comprises of the thalamus. Okay. Now, as I have told you, the diencephalon mainly comprises of a number of nuclei. Okay, now this thalamus, it consists of the paired over oval masses. Okay, so there are paired oval masses of the gray matter. Now, why gray matter? Remember what is the gray matter in the CNS? Yes, it is the group of cell bodies which is located in the gray matter. It is the unmyelinated neurons which are present in the gray matter, the dendrites. So the gray matter, it comprises of the most of the diencephalon. So this as I have told you, it is organized into a number of nuclei. Of course, there are several tracts also which are present of the white matter. So it is not completely made up of only the nuclei, but there will be tracts also which will be moving into and out of the diencephalon and of course the thalamus also. So that is the location of the thalamus, that is a thalamus. So as you can see that almost from all the sides it is covered with this cerebrum, the hemispheres. So entire thalamus is almost covered by this hemisphere from all the sides. Now, as I have told you that it comprises of a pair of oval masses, right? So there are two oval masses which are joined together by a small bridge like structure and that is called as the intermediate mass. The intermediate mass or it is also known as interthalamic adhesion. Okay. So this particular bridge it joins the right and the left half of the thalamus. That's the one. The intermediate mass or this one. So this picture shows one half of it that is the right hand side. So there is a bridge like connection between the two oval paired masses. So there are two as you can see this is the one and this is the second one and both of these are connected by this intermediate mass. Okay. Now apart from this there is a vertical Y shaped sheet of white matter which is shaped like a letter Y as you can see this one. Okay. So this particular structure it resembles letter Y isn't it? So it appears white because it is comprising of the white matter. So what, what white matter is composed of? Yes, it is mainly composed of the tracts. 
that is the exons of mainly the myelinated neurons are present in the white matter. So, this particular Y shaped sheet of white matter it is known as the internal medullary lamina. Okay. So, this particular structure which is present on obviously on both the oval masses. So, it divides the gray matter of the right and left sides of the thalamus. So, obviously there is gray matter on this side as well as gray matter on the other side. So, it is just divided by these bands of the white matter. So, it will comprise of the myelinated exons as I have told you, is not it? So, it is mainly comprised of the myelinated exons. So, these exons will enter and leave the various thalamic nuclei. So, it forms the connection between the various nuclei within the thalamus. Apart from that, these exons also connect in between the thalamus and the cerebral cortex. So, this pass through the internal capsule. There is a thick band of white matter which is lateral to the thalamus sideways. So, it passes through this internal capsule. Okay, now, what roles does this thalamus play? So, it mainly acts as a relay station in between the periphery and the cerebral cortex or maybe in between the spinal cord and the brain stem which forms the connection between the cerebral cortex. So, these signals which are passing the primary sensory impulses which are reaching their primary sensory areas which are located in the cerebral cortex. So, they relay in this thalamus. Okay, so, it mainly acts as a relay station. I hope you all are aware of what a relay station is. What of a relay race? So, is it is a running race in which more than one players are running, right? So, they pass on, right? A single person does not complete it, complete the race. So, that is a relay race wherein one participant it will the person will pass on to the next one and he will continue the race. So, similarly this thalamus it acts as a relay station in between the spinal cord and the brain stem and the cerebral cortex. So, most of the sensory impulses which are coming towards the cerebral cortex they relay at this thalamus. So, from here the next neuron will the next order neuron will originate. Apart from that the thalamus also contributes to the motor functions. Okay, see it itself can also transmit some information from the cerebellum and the basal nuclei towards the primary motor area of the cerebral cortex. So, it will also help in sending the motor impulses also. So, also this thalamus it acts as a relay station in between different areas of the cerebrum and also it helps in maintenance of the consciousness. So, these are some of the roles which are played by the thalamus. Now, as I have told you that thalamus is basically made up of nuclei, right? Most of it is made up of the gray matter which are organized into 7 major group of nuclei on each side of the thalamus, ok. So, which are these group of nuclei? So, a number of nuclei may also be present in, in, at a particular site. So, these are grouped together, ok. Now, the first one is the anterior nucleus that is a single one. 
the medial nuclei, multiple nuclei are present over here, the lateral group. So, this will also comprise of a number of nuclei, the ventral group which comprises of a number of nuclei located in the ventral region, then the intra laminar nuclei, the midline nucleus that is a singular one and the reticular nucleus. So, as we will discuss each and every one we will see that it comprises of a number of nuclei. So, we will see exactly from where it is getting the input to which particular region it is sending the output, what is its location and what is the role played by each of these nucleus. So, to start with the first one that is the anterior nucleus and let us see where it is located this is the one. So, as the name implies this is the one which is located towards the anterior side right. Now, let us see exactly from where the input is being received. So, input it is received from the hypothalamus. So, a neuron which is originating from the hypothalamus. What is hypothalamus? It is a part of the encephalon right. We are discussing about the thalamus. Hypothalamus is the next part ok. So, certain inputs from the hypothalamus are received by this particular anterior nucleus and it sends the output to the limbic system. So, any neuron which is originating from this hypothalamus, it supplies to this particular anterior nucleus. So, it will form a synapse over here and the next order neuron will begin and it will be supplying to the limbic system. Now, what is the role of this anterior nucleus? So, it functions in the emotions and the memory. So, it takes care about our emotions and the memory to a certain extent. Coming to the second group of nuclei that is the medial nuclei. Let us see where it is located that is the one, the one which is in yellow in color and as you can see that there are number of nuclei right. So, that is why medial nuclei. Now, this particular nuclei they receive the input from the limbic system and the basal nuclei and it sends the output to the cerebral cortex and the role which this particular nuclei plays in mediating the emotions, learning, memory and cognition that is thinking and knowing new things. Now, the third group of nuclei include the lateral group of nuclei. So, as the name implies lateral group that means they comprise of a number of nuclei. So, it comprises of mainly the three nuclei that is the lateral dorsal nucleus that is the one. Then the lateral posterior nucleus this is the one. and the pulvinar nucleus that is the one. So, why do you think that these are called as lateral group of nuclei that is because they are lying laterally right sideways that is why these are called as lateral group of nuclei. Now, these particular nuclei receive the input from the limbic system the superior colliculi which is a part of brain stem and the cerebral cortex and they send the output towards the cerebral cortex. Now, the lateral dorsal nucleus that is mainly involved in the 
expression of the emotions and the lateral posterior nucleus and the pulvinar nucleus that is mainly help in integrating the sensory information which is received from the periphery. Then the fourth group of nuclei these comprise of the ventral group. Okay. So, now this ventral group it comprises of five nuclei that is the ventral anterior nucleus, the ventral lateral nucleus, the ventral posterior nucleus, lateral geniculate nucleus and the medial geniculate nucleus. So, five nuclei are, are present in this particular ventral group. Now, coming to the first one that is the ventral anterior nucleus. that is the location of the ventral anterior nucleus. So, this particular nucleus it receives the input from the basal nuclei and it sends the output to the motor areas of the cerebral cortex and it plays an important role in the control of the movement, body movement. So, it has a way motor functions in mediating the movements of the body. Next one is the ventral lateral nucleus. Okay. So, ventral lateral nucleus that is the one. So, this particular nucleus it receives the input from the cerebellum the part which we have seen earlier and the basal nuclei and it sends the output to the motor areas of the cerebral cortex. So, it also plays a role in the control of movement just like the ventral anterior nucleus which we have seen. Next one is the ventral posterior nucleus. So, this particular nucleus it relays the impulses for the somatic sensations such as the touch, pressure, vibration, itch, tickle, the temperature sense, pain and the proprioception that is from the face and the body towards the cerebral cortex. So, it has an input from the sensory receptors, the somatic sensory receptors for all these sensations and it will give the output towards the cerebral cortex to make you aware about all these. Okay. So, this ventral posterior nucleus it is located over here that is the one. Next one is the lateral geniculate nucleus. Geniculate means bent like a knee. Okay, so, this is the one lateral geniculate nucleus. So, this particular nucleus it relays the visual impulses. So, these impulses will arise from the retina of the eye. So, whatever you see so, these signals are relayed to this particular nucleus. From here, these signals are sent to the primary visual area of the cerebral cortex to make you aware about what you see. Next one is the medial geniculate nucleus. So, this particular nucleus it relays the auditory impulses. Auditory impulses will be the ones which are received from the ear. So, these will make you aware about what you hear. So, these signals are sent to the primary auditory area which is located in the cerebral cortex. So, that is the reason why you, you are able to hear. So, these signals are mediated through the medial geniculate nucleus. Then the fifth group of nuclei are the intralaminar nuclei. 
okay. So, now these are multiple nuclei as you can see over here. So, a group of nuclei are present within the internal medullary lamina. Now, what is an internal medullary lamina? Remember this one, the Y shaped band of white matter. So, interspersed within these are the intralaminar nuclei. So, these particular nuclei they make connections in between the reticular formation, cerebellum, basal nuclei and a number of areas in the cerebral cortex. So, they mainly function in the arousal by activating the cerebral cortex by relaying the signals from the reticular activating formation and also integrating the sensory as well as motor information which is received. Then the sixth nucleus is the midline nucleus, okay, midline nucleus is this one. So, this is a thin band of the gray matter which is adjacent to the third ventricle and mainly playing the role of memory and olfaction. Now, what is olfaction? Yes, olfaction is the sense of smell. So, this is mediated through this midline nucleus. Now, the seventh nucleus is the reticular nucleus. So, this particular nucleus it surrounds the lateral aspect of the thalamus. As you can see, it is located laterally, that is the one, the one red in color. Okay, here, this one. Okay, so this particular nucleus. It monitors, filters and integrates the activities of the other thalamic nuclei. So, that is the role of reticular nucleus. So, this is to do with the thalamus with all those nuclei. So, we have seen from where it is receiving the input and where it is giving the output. So, it acts mainly as a relay station. So, coming to the next part of the diencephalon that is hypothalamus, hypo, hypo means under. So, why it is named so? Because it is located just inferior to the thalamus. As you can see over here, that is the thalamus, it is the intermediate mass of thalamus which uh, connects the two oval shaped masses. So, just inferior to this particular thalamus lies the hypothalamus. So, hypothalamus again it is comprising of a number of nuclei and these nuclei are divided into four major regions that is the mammillary region, the tubral region, supraoptic region and the preoptic region. As you can see all these nuclei, these are all the nuclei. As you can see some color coding is given over here, that is for the four regions. Mammillary region, it is shown red in color, tubral region, blue in color, supraoptic region, green in color and preoptic color, purple in color. So, coming to the first one, that is the mammillary region. So, this is located just adjacent to the midbrain. Now, where is the midbrain? That is the one, correct? So, that is the midbrain, superior part of the brain stem and that is the pons. Remember the parts of the brain stem, medulla, pons and the midbrain. So, just located adjacent to the midbrain, the mammillary region, this one and this one. So, it is the most posterior part of the hypothalamus, right? 
So, this is the anterior side that is the posterior side. So, it is located towards the posterior side and comprises of two nuclei that is the mammillary bodies and the posterior hypothalamic nuclei. Okay, so, that is the mammillary body and this one is the posterior hypothalamic nucleus. So, these mammillary bodies these are two small rounded projections. So, these will act as a relay station for reflexes which are related to the sense of smell olfaction. The next region is the tubural region. So, that is the widest part of the hypothalamus and it is depicted blue in color this one, this one and this one. So, it is divided into three nuclei that is dorsomedial nucleus. The dorsomedial nucleus is this one, then the ventromedial nucleus, the ventromedial nucleus is this one and the arcuate nucleus that is located over here. Now, apart from these three nuclei is present a stalk like structure called as infundibulum as you can see it is extending from this hypothalamus. So, this connects the hypothalamus to the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland it is an endocrine gland was earlier considered to be the master gland, but actually it is controlled by the hypothalamus. So, it has connections. So, actually the hypothalamus will secrete certain hormones which in turn are controlling the pituitary gland, gland and the secretions from pituitary gland in turn are controlling the other glands. Okay, so, this infundibulum it serves as a connection between the two and it is encircled by a structure called as the medial eminence. And the third region is the supraoptic region. Supra means above and optic means eye. Now, is it located superior to your eye? Is it not so? Then why it is called as supraoptic region? That is because it lies superior to this particular region that is the optic chiasm. That is the place where the optic nerves cross over to opposite side. Remember the right hand side of the body it is controlled by the left hand side of your brain. So, crossing over takes place. So, that crossing over for your optic nerve which is supplying your eyes that is located in this particular region and that is why it is called as supra optic as it is located just superior to this particular region. Okay. So, now this particular supra optic region it comprises of four nuclei that is the paraventricular nucleus, the supra optic nucleus, anterior hypothalamic nucleus and the supra chiasmatic nucleus. So, these are the ones. This one is the paraventricular, this one is the anterior hypothalamic nucleus, that is the supra optic nucleus okay, because it is just lying superior to this particular structure which is connecting over here okay. and this one is the supra chiasmatic nucleus. So, these are the four nuclei. Now, exons from this paraventricular and the supra optic nuclei. Now, which are the ones? Paraventricular and the supra optic nuclei. So, these exons they form hypothalamo hypophyseal tract. So, this particular tract it extends through the infundibulum to the posterior lobe of the 
pituitary gland. Okay, so this particular exons will be relaying in between over here. Then the next region is the preoptic region. So this is lying just anterior to the supraoptic region. Now where is the supraoptic region? The one which is shown green in color. So as you can see, just anterior to it lies the preoptic region. So this comprises of two nuclei that is the medial and lateral preoptic nuclei. Okay, so this one is the medial preoptic nucleus and another one is the lateral preoptic nucleus. So these help in regulating certain autonomic activity. Now coming to the functions of the hypothalamus. Okay, so this is controlling many body activities and it is one of the major regulators of the homeostasis. So it plays a very important role in homeostasis. Apart from that, it also is involved in the relay station for the sensory impulses from both the somatic as well as visceral senses. Also, they receive the input from the visual areas, the taste sensation and the smell. So, also some other receptors within the hypothalamus, they are continuously monitoring the osmotic pressure, blood glucose level, certain hormonal level, temperature of the blood are also being monitored and accordingly the signals are being sent. Apart from that, hypothalamus also have several connections with the pituitary gland and also produces a number of hormones. So accordingly, some of the important functions of hypothalamus, these include control of the ANS that is autonomic nervous system. Since it receives the inputs from various visceral regions also. Production of certain hormones regulation of emotional and behavioral patterns, then regulation of eating and drinking, control of body temperature, regulation of the circadian rhythms and state of consciousness. So these are some of the functions of the hypothalamus. Coming to the third part of the diencephalon that is epithalamus. Now epi means above. Okay, so it's located somewhere over here that is a part of epithalamus right pineal gland. So this is a small region which is located superior and posterior to the thalamus that is why it is known as epithalamus and mainly comprises of two parts that is pineal gland and hebanular nucleus. Now coming to the first part that is the pineal gland. Now why it is known as pineal gland? That is because of its pine cone like shape. So this is a very small gland almost as a size of a small pea and it protrudes from the midline of the third ventricle. Okay, where is the third ventricle located over here? That is the one. Okay, so just in the posterior aspects of this third ventricle lies the pineal gland. So this is a gland, right? So it secretes a hormone. So hormone called as melatonin is produced by this pineal gland. And this particular gland, gland secretes this hormone in the darkness so at night. So this particular hormone helps in promoting the sleepiness. Why do you feel sleepy at night? That's because of the levels of this hormone is very high. That's why you feel sleepy at night. Okay. So this particular hormone helps in maintaining the body's biological clock. Now supposing if you are traveling from one country to another country, or mainly if you shift from one continent to another continent, there will be jet lag, right? What is a jet lag? The time 
at these two places will not be same right now your biological clock will be adjusted according to your country in which you are staying so you are staying in if you are staying in india your biological clock is adjusted accordingly but supposing if you travel to say african countries what will happen your biological clock is set according to the indian timings right but what is the time in the africa it's lagging behind right so there is a jet lag so to adjust this jet, jet lag sometimes melatonin can be given which help in adjusting the biological clock in certain individuals who travel from one continent to another continent okay so that's the pineal gland located just in the midline and the second part of this epithalamus is hebanular nuclei okay so that's the one just superior to the pineal gland lies the hebanular nuclei so these are mainly involved in the olfaction now olfaction specially which is associated in response to some emotional response to certain odor say for example if you smell the cookies which are being baked by your mother in the kitchen so just by smelling that odor you have a very nice feeling right so that emotional response which 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 is given in response to certain odors that is taken care of by the hebanular nucleus okay so this to do with the diencephalon which comprises of three parts that is the thalamus hypothalamus and the epithalamus and we have seen that it comprises of a number of nuclei which mainly form a relay station between two areas maybe within the cns itself okay so this is the reference thank you for watching